Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different from my normal videos. Um, this will neither be a computer specific nor a server video. Um, it's going to be a little bit of kind of network security. Um, and I'm going to be showing how you can use certain tools that are open source to determine what ports are open and available on a target computer. Um, so to do this, I have two virtual machines set up, one and two, um, and I have a piece of software called Nmap, which will let me map out ports, specific ports, on my target machine here. So I'm going to get an IP address, 1.38, so we're going to change this just a little bit. and we're just going to scan and see what ports are open currently. And this is with the firewall active on my target computer right now. So once it's done running against the firewall, I'm going to take the firewall down and we'll do the same thing and compare. And then I have another little tool called Valhalla Honeypot. Um, and when we get to that, I'll explain what it does and show how it works, and then we'll test that as well. Alright, so currently with the firewall active on my target machine, um, it scanned through the thousand, roughly, of the well-known ports, the ports that have been assigned by IANA, um, and none of them are open or vulnerable currently. So I'll go ahead and take the firewall down. And we'll run that scan again. <coughs> Keep in mind, in a production environment, you probably don't want to shut your firewalls off unless you have a very powerful, very robust hardware firewall in line. I'm not going to get into all the systems you could use, but it's a good idea to have some form of firewall protection. Alright, so we'll go ahead and run that scan again. And right away, it, it instantly... <coughs> Sorry, it instantly starts to return open ports. Alright, so then I'm going to go ahead and re-enable the firewall. And we'll go ahead and activate the honeypot now. And so with the honeypot, I can make this computer seem like a server running any number of services. For example, an FTP server. I'll go ahead and enable that. And so now if somebody's scanning my network, they'd see this computer and <coughs> it'll resemble an FTP server. I'll do the same thing for Telnet here. And again, so now this resembles a Telnet server to anybody that's scanning the network. If the services aren't actually on the server or on the computer. I can't use this computer for FTP services. It just looks like it's there to anybody that's scanning my network. So go ahead and start up monitoring. I'm going to go ahead and grab a quick little screenshot of these ports so we can compare afterwards. And we'll run it again. Keep in mind this is with the firewall active now. And so it's seeing the FTP port, and it's seeing the Telnet port, 21 and 23. We can go take a look at the firewall and see what 12345 is, although I think it might still be something um, related to the Valhalla honeypot. So we can compare those. So here's with the firewall off. 
right here. Compared to my firewall on and me running some form of honeypot, which is designed to kind of trick hackers, but really it just tricks anybody that's scanning your network and scanning that computer specifically. Um, so the one downside is that this is really kind of basic. Um, more experienced hackers especially and will probably run a more in-depth scan and they'll be able to tell that this is a honeypot. Um, for example, if we went for a more intense scan, it'll take a little bit longer but I think we'll get some kind of indication that the services aren't actually running on that machine and it's just pretending to have those services. So the more intense scan, the more in-depth scan, it still identifies the same ports. But then it goes and actually scans the services specifically to make sure that the port that's open actually matches the service being provided. Um, while it's doing that, we can actually see it on the honeypot side um, every time it tries to um, scan that specific port or that specific service. Um, InMap will try to log in to an FTP server using just some generic login. And so, again, this is an open source honeypot. It's very simple, um, but it's useful, especially for penetration testing, um, at least at the basic levels. Then we can compare that up just a little bit. There we go. And so before, Nmap thought that this looked like um, a Telnet server, but that TCP wrapped indicates that there isn't actually a Telnet service running on that port on that machine. So it realizes that some of these aren't quite what they appear. Um, it looks like the FTP service um, honeypot still fooled the network scan, at least at this point. Um, you can also run this. So the first one I did was just lowercase s, capital S, basically SS, um, which is just kind of a stealthy um, scan. So then we can change it to SV and run it again. Go ahead and close this. And this will give me, again, it'll give me more information. It'll look a lot like the intent scan. And we should still be able to watch it um, as it tries to scan those services. So it's still trying, still scanning this machine. And so again, it still sees the FTP service as an actual FTP service, even though it's a honeypot. So at least that is working pretty well um, against Nmap, at least. Um, but we can see that one's kind of questionable. It doesn't look like a, a legitimate service. Uh, and then we see backdoor, which again tells us that's not actually um, a telnet server that's running real telnet services. Um, so again, the best thing to do um, if you have a very, very large network with a lot of very sensitive material or data, um, having at least one or maybe multiple honeypots on your network probably is not a bad idea. But the really important thing is to make sure that your firewall is running correctly. Um, with that firewall running, you can help reduce the likelihood of people hacking in through specific ports. Again, nothing is completely safe. There is always somebody that's going to find a way around or a way in, 
but this can definitely help harden your network um, considerably. Um, as always, if there are any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave them. F please feel free to leave them for me below. I will try to reply in a timely fashion. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video.